Welcome to The Issue here on your TV. I'm Mark Carr, and as you'll notice, we're still broadcasting The Issue from our homes. So my co-host, guest, and producer are safe. Uh, we're not sure when we'll get back into the studio, uh, so we'll continue to broadcast from our homes where everyone can stay safe. My co-host this week is John Sawyer, retired president and CEO of the Oakville Chamber of Commerce. John, are you and your family staying safe? Everything's good, Mark. Good. That's that's what we like to hear. I I, I want to cut this short and pass it over to you so we can get to our guest uh, and the questions uh, right off the bat. So I'll turn it over to you to introduce our first guest. Well, thanks, Mark. I am delighted to have Pam Damoff with us, who's the Member of Parliament for Oakville North Burlington. I've known Pam for a long time. Um, I think even before she was elected uh, a town councillor. So at my time at the chamber, we worked uh, closely together and I always enjoyed her company. So Pam, I'm delighted that you could, uh, could join us today. And the first question is, how are you and how are you coping? Well, thank you, John, and thank you, Mark. And it's it's wonderful to be with you today to to, uh, to talk about what's going on and, and unprecedented uh, times. Uh, and I'm doing well, thank you for asking. And, and uh, managing my office has been closed since mid-March to the public, but we've been continuing to work virtually and uh, you know, as as so many people are, we're we're continuing to serve the constituents of Oakville North Burlington, but we're doing it remotely and not in the office right now. Okay, so that just leads to the next question. Um, the world's changed so much in the last ten to twelve weeks, and what's a typical day look like for you right now? Well, you know, it's it's a lot of these kinds of meetings, John, or calls, um, getting used to the squares on a computer screen, which is not <laughs> my preference. Uh, I prefer meeting in person. I think there's a lot to be said for meeting in person. But, you know, when this first started on the very first Monday when my office was closed, we decided we would do a daily update to the constituents of Oakville, North Burlington. And I know it goes beyond there, but primarily focused on our riding because people were craving factual information and so much was changing at that time on an hourly basis sometimes. So we've been doing an email every day. So I have a meeting every morning with my staff and we go over what we're going to talk about. Um, we have been, they've been very well received. And then uh, a lot of meetings like this, uh, I continue to be parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Indigenous Services. So I have a call every morning with that group to talk about what we're doing in Indigenous communities, both on and off reserve. And uh, and and then, of course, now the House is sitting uh, virtual parliament or a hybrid of virtual parliament. So I'm online with a lot more squares uh, when I'm on that. But and then our, our committee, Indigenous and Northern Affairs Committee, is meeting twice a week. So I'm on those calls, um, Zoom calls twice a week for the committee meetings dealing with the COVID response um, in Indigenous and Northern Affairs. So you're, you're still busy. You always had a high energy level. So I think it's good that you're, you're kept uh, busy. Um, I just to tag on to what you were, were talking about, about communicating with the public. Um, I understand uh, you and Effie Trafalopoulos um, actually published a joint newsletter, which leads into my next question. I personally have been so disappointed um, in the level of political partisanship that has developed uh, over the years. But I'm, I'm really pleased to see the level of cooperation between the federal and the provincial governments over the past three months. And I, I wanna ask you, how can we ensure that that level of cooperation continues in the future? Well, John, thank you. You and I have shared that uh, concern about the partisanship because I've always felt that you can get more done if you're working together. And certainly, you're right. Effie and I, um, right from the very first week in March, we decided we would do a weekly update together because people um, wanted information from both federal and provincial uh, government. So we continue to do that every Friday as a joint update from the two of us. And people people can go on to my website and sign up for that. We also did a teletown hall together along with the 
the, the mayors of both Oakville and Burlington. And I, I think that level of, of cooperation, it's still continuing. And I, I think there is a will um, by all levels of government, certainly by me personally, but I think you're seeing it from the leadership in the government too, to continue to work together because we're seeing that we're dealing with an unprecedented crisis and we can't be playing partisan games right now. We need to be cooperating together. So I, I am hopeful that it will continue. Um, it, 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 it's critical if we're serving the, 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 the citizens of Canada that all levels are working towards the same goal. So, Pam, uh, it, it was interesting to me, uh, just before we, we actually started the recording, you were talking about uh, Doug Ford and the cooperation uh, between the provincial and federal governments. And, and this goes right to, uh, to John's question uh, about how, how can we ensure that this cooperation continues? Well, you know, I think, I think you're seeing voices loud and clear across the province of citizens who say this is the way it should work. And I think that the more people continue to say that, the more that politicians will recognize that this is what people want. Uh, I found the last federal election absolutely horrible in how, how uh, negative it was, how uh, personal it became. And I think, I think people across the country felt the same way, particularly in Ontario, and in, particularly in my riding, for sure, in Oakville, North Burlington, I heard it loud and clear. So I think citizens have spoken really loudly. I hear a lot from people, and I'm sure Doug Ford and, and Prime Minister Trudeau do as well, um, hearing from people saying, please keep doing this, because this is what we want to see, is people working together, not working against each other. That's uh, that's great, and 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 let's let's hope it does uh, continue. Pam, I, I I've heard comments from the rural community about internet uh, connectivity for schoolwork and for working. Uh, it ha is it has become, in my opinion, uh, necessity. High speed internet. What can you tell your rural constituents about high speed? internet? You know, Mark, it's, it's something that government has been talking about for a long time. Uh, and you're absolutely right. It's no longer a luxury to have access to the internet. It's become a necessity. School has gone online. All of the government programs you've had to apply online. Uh, you can't go to the library or Tim Hortons to access free Wi-Fi anymore. So uh, that connectivity, we've invested in an in, uh, uh, urban broadband, or an, uh, sorry, a universal broadband fund. Uh, connect, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I think it's Connecting Canada Fund. Um, but one of the things that has really highlighted for me during this crisis is connectivity has become one of the number one issues across the country. And there's, there's rural and urban divide. There's a socioeconomic divide uh, between, uh, you know, you've got mom, dad, and two kids at home all accessing the internet. It's not only access to the internet, it's also devices to be able to do it. So if you only have one computer and you're sharing the time for learning and everything else, it's, uh, it's a problem. Problem. And then you also have um, on reserve and off reserve where you've got even in some place like Six Nations, where there's limited access to the internet. So I think it's something that I've been uh, speaking, it's now in Minister Monsef's office. Um, but I, I certainly am making it a priority for myself to make sure that we are connecting as many people as we can to to the internet and also making sure they have the devices to be able to do it. There's been a great deal of concern expressed about the impact of the COVID virus in long-term uh, care facilities. And are there any comments you'd like to make regarding the future of long-term care in Ontario and Canada? Well, I mean, John, I think all of us share the, the horror of reading the reports mm -hmm. that the military put out. Um, I, I, I wrote something uh, myself about it. I had actually written to the Minister of Seniors, Deb Schult, uh, back at the end of April to say we need a national review. Now, as you know, long-term care falls under the provincial government. But I, I, you know, as we were talking earlier about cooperation, this is something that requires all levels of government working together. And that includes uh, local government. Not all long care homes are run poorly. 
but we need to have standards. We need to make sure we're investing enough money into long-term care. And I think we require, in fact, Effie and I have already talked about this, trying to see how we can work together um, to come up with some recommendations on how we can deal with this going forward. Because our seniors deserve uh, to, to be living in dignity and with respect. And we're not, we're not, we should not be having soldiers working in long-term care. Uh, it, it, it's just something that requires all of us and it requires Canadians to put their the, the backing behind government to make the changes and invest the money that we need to make. Okay. okay. Pam, Pam uh, just in the last uh, couple of minutes, um, I'd like to know how we're going to balance the need to follow the recommendations of the public health officials versus supporting a revival of the economy. I think they're both important, but what does that balance look like to you? And, and you know, Mark, that is, that is one of the, the critical questions we've been going through all of this, right, is, is I think all governments have been taking their advice from public health and we need to. But then we also look at, you know, places like Emma, Emma's Back Porch in Burlington closed. Yeah. And I think everybody was heartbroken by that. And I don't think it's going to be the first business we see closed. So how do we make sure, I think what we need to be doing is making sure that we allow businesses to open in a safe way. I think the provincial government is doing a good job around that. That, and they've been um, listening to public health in terms of how to do that going forward. We need we need government to be supporting businesses as they reopen. I don't have all the answers, Mark, and I'm not going to pretend that I do. But it's a, but it's a delicate balance between supporting these businesses and, and adhering to public health guidelines. Well, we we only have about um, two minutes left. So, and I have two questions left. So, uh, <laughs> Pam, the, the last one is any comments you'd like to add before we wrap up but it, it's no secret i'm a fiscal conservative you know that about me and i just want to know if you have any thoughts on what things look like down the road and how we're going to pay for it so if you could answer that one first and then wrap up with any any comments you have and we only joey's uh, vigorously saying two minutes left so <laughs> over to you <laughs> yeah and and you know john we're still coming out of the crisis so it's it's hard to see what the recovery is going to look like and and i i mean no one expected this to happen and this amount of money to be spent and i don't think anyone begrudges that money being spent you know i was speaking to hunter amenities today who has been able to bring their employees back and shift from making shampoos and conditioner for hotel industry to making hand sanitizer so the government program is working um, but where we go from there is 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 a critical question and I don't have the answer but it's certainly top of mind for the Minister of Finance but I think we need to see how we come out of this first John before we can actually um, see how like what the recovery looks like because we're not at recovery yet okay and anything else you want to say before we wrap up you know, I think just encourage people to um, stay safe. Um, please do sign up for my newsletter. It, I, I have been providing a lot of local content so you can find out things that are going on both federally, provincially and locally. And I just want to thank both of you for continuing to keep um, our community informed about what's going on during this time. Pam, I, I do want to thank you for making uh, the time to talk to us today on uh, the issue and updating the the uh, the community on the programs that uh, are available and uh, remind you to uh, to stay safe. Thanks a lot. We'll be right back with the president of the Oakville and Milton and District Real Estate Board here on the issue. I'm Mark Carr. Welcome back to The Issue. I'm Mark Carr, and my co-host this week is John Sawyer, retired president and CEO of the Oakville Chamber of Commerce. Uh, nice to have you with us this week, uh, John, and I'll turn it over to you to introduce our next guest. Uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, very pleased to have uh, Richard Lima here. Uh, Richard is the president of the Oakville, Milton and District Real Estate Board. Um, real estate is an important issue in, in Halton region, I think, as every, everyone knows. And I thought, given what's going on um, right now, uh, it would be good to get his perspective on the real estate market and, and what's happening out there. 
But first, of course, uh, Richard, how are you and how are you coping? Uh, well, thanks for asking, John and uh, Mark. Uh, I guess uh, the only thing that's really missing is a haircut. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's top of mind with me, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, that makes three of us then. <laughs> Look at this. It's turning up at the ends. <laughs> Our, our, producer, she, yeah. our producer doesn't have that uh, that difficulty, so uh, Joey's okay. Yeah. He's so handsome, he doesn't need hair. Some <laughs> of us are blessed, I, I get it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know, it's been 48 years of real estate. This is my second time as uh, president of the board, uh, but these times are uh, really unprecedented. And, um, uh, you know, I've, we've had challenges before, 22% interest rates, uh, in '82, we've had uh, uh, we've had a downturn of uh, market prices in '89 of 25 percent due to uh, uh, a report that came out. But uh, this is really unprecedented. Uh, so it's uh, you know it's hit everyone hard, every business, uh, and certainly in real estate, you know we're essential. We're considered a, an essential business. And uh, what it, what I've heard. Uh, said is that you know we've had 10 years of technology um, really uh, cram cramped into 10 weeks of having to learn it all mm -hmm. to be sure. able to manage so so how is has your world changed in the last 10 to, to 12 weeks well along with uh, our excellent board uh, team of directors and our hard hardworking uh, real estate board staff uh, we've had to ramp it up and increase our communications and our support you know, all of us as realtors, uh, we needed to move quickly to adapt ourselves to this new uh, way of doing business, uh, of uh, not being able to uh, meet with people, to um, uh, every aspect that we do is, is usually social in the sense that we're person to person, face to face. Uh, so we've had to ramp up our, our training and our support in that for our members. Okay. Richard, Richard, can you tell me I mean, a, a basic tenant of your business is showing people or prospective buyers uh, homes. How are you doing that uh, in this environment? Well, a lot of the uh, uh, technology that has been readily available for the last 10 years, we've all kind of had to learn how to do this. And so a lot of showings today are uh, either certainly by appointment where uh, uh, each party, the buyer and the seller, needs to acknowledge uh, certain protocols, safety protocols. For example, for buyers, uh, you know, not to touch anything, they need to have their mask, they need to have their gloves, they need to have, uh, you know, wipes. And uh, same with the sellers, we need to make sure that the property that they're gonna see uh, is ready with uh, maybe doors open, uh, cabinets open, uh, so th from the physical point of view, that has been uh, a way that some people have gone out to, to view property. But the other uh, great thing is, is we're seeing something like a 26% increase in the use of video and virtual tours, uh, where uh, it's a two-way situation online where you can go from one room to the next room and basically view a home along with measurements, along with... Uh, all of the uh, amenities of that home, you can actually vis visualize it uh, virtually on online. Okay, John. Thanks, Mark. Um, so I think the big question is, uh, and I'm sure it's on a lot of people's minds um, in Halton, is what does the real estate market look like today versus a year ago? Well, the statistics have just uh, been provided to me uh, today um, for this this month. Uh, coming up to the March fifteenth um, date, everything was robust. It was a tremendous marketplace, um, and clearly, with the uh, pandemic, the COVID, it did really shut things down in terms of uh, uh, the ability to go list and, and show homes. So for our uh, marketplace, the big question is, uh, you know, what impact? Well, it did stall a lot of the uh, sales numbers because people weren't putting their home on the market and uh, those that did needed to sell. But uh, the statistics that I received are pretty telling. 
that the, for example, prices over the last three months of uh, March, April, May now uh, are basically holding steady about 6.4% actually increase over uh, average price, 6.4% increase over uh, last year and 7.2% uh, median price. So as many times get- above as below. That, that's fascinating to me because w- what I've been hearing is that the only listings that are out there now and, and getting listings in Halton has always been a, a challenge. There's huge demand um, in this market, but uh, the, the, the only people that are listing are those that actually need to sell for whatever reason. So therefore buyers are uh, looking for or hoping for bargains, but um, if prices are going up, like how can you explain that? It seems to, an anomaly to me. Yeah, the, the prices uh, have been staying steady, I think because of the shortage of uh, re- uh, required listings that people are looking for. So this could be a segment of the marketplace, whether it's first time home buyer or, or uh, move up from first to uh, a little bit uh, larger prop premises. Uh, the, the li- number of listings has remained low. It has been actually remained low for, for many, uh, almost years, where the number of properties available for the buyers that are looking is just not enough. And so that has driven the, uh, the multiple offer situation scenario that still exists. So prime properties that come onto the market are, tr- are, are grabbed up very quickly. So, so that, that prompts me to ask, like, what does this look like down the road? Do you see that uh, trend continuing? Or as we go through this crisis, do you, do you anticipate prices will soften at all? Well, I think uh, there, it's been demonstrated that the, the demand for homes is still there. And even when a property is listed for sale, that's another buyer that needs to find another place to live. So uh, locally, the marketplace has been a very sta- stable uh, trend. Uh, I don't foresee any downside uh, to it, to this marketplace uh, in the short term. There is talk about you know, uh, the nece- necessity to sell, where some buyers will be required to sell or need to sell. Uh, and that would probably bring more uh, real estate uh, listings on, online for buyers to consider. So I think we'll have to see and wait, see what hap- happens with that. We do know that with this COVID, there has been a number of uh, home sellers that have had to um, have had to uh, delay, uh, defer their payments, for example, for mortgaging. And so there is that uh, there is talk of that sort of cliff, if you want to call it, that of a number of people with uh, employment uh, situations as well. So we'll have to keep an eye on on that situation, but. Right now, it does seem that the market has balanced itself with the number of listings, number of sales, uh, pretty much uh, being about the same. Richard, uh, I, I know uh, a big factor in the in the real estate business is mortgage rates. Yes. Uh, can you tell our our audience what the mortgage rates are approximately now? And do you expect to change as we move through this economic uh, uh, time into the new reality? Do you expect mortgage rates to increase or decrease? I don't know how far down they can go, but uh, can you talk about the mortgage rates? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, we just talked about it at our Mindset Monday meeting and uh, our uh, Polo loans. Our uh, mortgage people mentioned that uh, rates have really uh, come down uh, to phenomenal, uh, excellent rates of 2.64, uh, which uh, also easing off on the uh, the required uh, the uh, the mortgage rate that they uh, that they base it on is usually about uh, two or three percent higher for qualification. So they've eased up on the, the mortgage uh, rules a bit to uh, allow uh, for more buyers uh, flexibility, but rates have been actually recently much, uh, much 
preferable, much uh, excellent. Uh, the mortgage rates have been excellent uh, at 2.64, and uh, with with that, it has drawn more new buyers. The increase of uh, applications by new uh, first-time buyers uh, has increased, so we're now seeing that. Uh, happening. I think there's some optimism that they might be able to get a deal. So what, so what would you tell uh, somebody who's looking for a home uh, right now in this environment? Uh, I, uh, same message I tell every buyer that is thinking of buying and, and that is to, to take the time to reach out to a mortgage broker or a mortgage lender that uh, perhaps your agent has uh, recommended. Uh, and have that 15 minute conversation uh, with your buyer. Um, one of the things that we talked about this morning is that we're now gonna be able to, to have more, uh, remember first time buyer seminars? Well, we're gonna be with the Zoom technology now, uh, it makes it much more convenient for first time buyers to, to hop on the line with a, a mortgage broker and uh, talk about uh, the, uh, qualifications. Every scenario is different, everybody has a different, uh, uh, covenant that they're they're bringing to the table, and so uh, with the uh, mortgage rules uh, changing, this is a, an important uh, step along the way of buying a home. Wow! I and I had to smile when you mentioned 1982. We carried our mortgage for uh, a year at 20 percent, and that was that was a real yeah. challenge. At that well, time. John, just a, just an interesting uh, sidebar. Uh, you know, my brother has been uh, at the provincial, federal, and now municipal level uh, politically, uh, and it was that that time frame that uh, that gave him impetus uh, to get into uh, politics. So, uh. so uh, it was that uh, that increase that uh, that he had to pay. Uh, that drove him up the wall, and he wanted to uh, to get things done, and uh, and so just a just a I, side I didn't part. know. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Good to yeah. know. Yeah, um, Joey's Richard. Joey's. <laughs> yeah, uh, Joey's giving us the uh, the wrap up. So I want to thank you, Richard, for uh, for joining us uh, today on the issue. So thank you very much, and and remind our viewing audience that these are difficult times. The issue and your TV will continue to provide relevant, up-to-date information. Uh, so you can and you can always check in with Halt News each weekday uh, for local news. So, uh, Richard, thank you very much. John, we'll see you next time and join us next week for the issue, truly local. Stay safe, everyone.